Hello and welcome to the player prop video for Sunday Night Football. We got the Green Bay Packers at Philadelphia Eagles. I'm your host, Matthew Mato from Lamps.com. Joined here by Jacob Wayne. And uh, I think there's quite a bit of value in the player props tonight. Jacob, I know we were a little condensed for research. We're recording this the morning of the game. We're trying to get it out as quickly as possible. But do you have a favorite player prop as of right now? Yeah, my favorite one in this game is going to be Randall Cobb. Over 31 and a half receiving yards. Um Targeted Paris Campbell against the Eagles last week, and that was successful, uh, mostly because of the absence of slot corner Avante Maddox. The Eagles have two outstanding outside cornerbacks and Darius Slay and James Bradbury, and they had a great slot corner Maddox, but now he's on injured reserve, and Josiah Scott has really struggled in the spot. Uh, through two weeks as a starting slot corner, he's allowed eight catches for 122 yards, and he has a below average PFF grade in both games, so I'm, a, I'm a happy to target him again in this matchup. Um, Cobb has played over 80% of the snaps from the slot this season, so I think he'll, he'll be matched up with him more often than not. Um, and he's gone over this receiving yardage number in five of his last six games, had six catches for 73 yards last week. So I think this is actually priced a little bit too low, so I like the over here for Cobb. Definitely don't dislike it. Um, I think for myself, it's tough. Uh, I'm... <laughs> Trying to find the damn longest rush. Um, and I think I like Aaron Jones over 14 and a half longest rush. But I also don't blame someone for going with just his rushing total over 55 and a half. We talked about this. The Eagles stink against the run. They they brought in Joseph. They brought in Sue. They're trying to get better. But I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I it was a big point in my video last week on why I was okay picking the Eagles against the Colts. It was against Jonathan Taylor. It was against, you know, a pretty beefy line that hasn't played great, but they have the talent there, and they performed adequately. So I'd say it's improved, especially with Joseph there. However, Aaron Jones is just, you know, he he's looked really, really good in my opinion. This offensive line has looked so much improved, and I'd be pretty shocked if he doesn't get to that 60-yard total in this game. I'd also be pretty shocked if he doesn't at least get one kind of chunk of play. Honestly... I like the longest rush over 14 and a half. They don't currently have the alternate out of uh, Jones 100 plus yards, but I might play that instead of the rushing yards over 55 and a half. I don't know about you, Jacob, but I really do feel like Aaron Jones, as of late, has been either he's not going to get near that rushing yard total or he's going to hit 100. There's not I been mean, really in between. Career, man. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So, like. I'm not going to play over 55 and a half. They don't currently have the alternate. So let me go and make a very quick same game parlay just so I can get the line that I want. And I'll take over 79 and a half. And then what you do to kind of make it a parlay is you just pick a kind of ridiculous line that you think is going to hit. And I don't know. I have to find a pick. You know, I'll go through, I'll go through Randall Cobb pick because I actually really like that. I don't see him. Having a bad game. I'll take over 29 and a half at minus 140. That's a plus 525 same game parlay. So throw a half unit on that. Um, back to you. Yeah, I also like Aaron Jones in this matchup for sure. Um, I think the best spot to target him, though, might be just anytime touchdown score at plus money. Um, you know, we've seen he can get it through the passing game or the run game. He has 14 red zone touches this year, but only one touchdown inside the red zone. So. Do for a bit of positive regression in that area. Um, the Packers have, I think, I don't know right in front of me, but it was like 85% of their touchdowns this year have been through the passing game. And I just don't see that as being sustainable throughout a full season. Um, I think that we'll start, we'll start to see that swing back the other way. And, you know, when they are inside the 20, the Eagles outside cornerbacks can be very successful against guys like Alan Zard and Christian Watson. So I think you'll see Aaron Jones be more involved in, Either the rushing game or is like an outlet receiver underneath, and he's very capable of scoring a touchdown against this defense to me. Yeah, and you can get plus 135 on Caesar, so I'll give you that number. And then along the same lines, if I could get Watson at over 300 value, I was going to take it, and right now FanDuel is giving me exactly plus 300 on him to score. I agree with your analysis. I think this is going to be a tougher game, and just because he scored a lot recently doesn't mean he's going to continue. At the same time... As someone who's watched way too much Aaron Rodgers over the course of his career, he does get in these moods where he really finds a guy he likes inside those 20s, and he hyper-targets him. I think yeah. Watson's become that guy. So, plus 300 odds. Again, this only needs to hit at, like, 
sub 30% clip. I think he gets a touchdown in more than enough games, uh, you know, if you replay this enough times, where it becomes a value. It's also, this is a good betting advice, but it's a little bit of a hedge against him scoring a touchdown because I'm playing him in fantasy football in like three leagues, and there's a league where I need him to not score for some draft things. That Complicated, but it's a little bit of hedge, hedging for myself. Um, back to you, Jacob. Yeah, I think I'm not going to make it official right now because I haven't done enough research just to be entirely transparent. But I think I'm going to like Devonta Smith in this game. Um, AJ Brown has been banged up, and I think we've seen defenses change their strategy of like playing more zone coverage against this team like we talked about. Um, and, and AJ Brown will see a lot of Jair, Jair Alexander, most likely, uh, whereas Devonta Smith will probably have the easier matchup in this game. Um, he's been very productive recently. Uh, definitely targeted him a couple times recently, and it's been successful. So I think that's somebody I'm going to look to target here. Um, not locking it in right now. I want to do a little more research before I make it official, but I'll comment that below. Uh, I think I will be on Devonta Smith in this game. Yeah, and right now they're not really giving you great props because everyone, every sportsbook has them over four and a half receptions at like plus or minus 180. Um, so if I were to do it, it probably would be in the same, like, again, finding either someone that's just going to straight up give you the alternate, which is always great, or if you have to do a same-game parlay, I would do that. Because I'm totally fine taking over five and a half uh, receptions, which I don't know if they're currently even offering, and they're not, on DraftKings. So it'll be a little bit of a search to find the prop, but I'm with you. Like, he's going to get targets in this game. He's going to be the guy that should be a little bit more open. I mean, lastly, <clears throat> I would take a flyer. You can't get this on DraftKings, but if you can get really high plus money on Jalen Hurts not to throw a passing TD, I absolutely love that. I don't think the Eagles don't score, but it's been so clear that near the red zone, they're running the football in. They just, like, they don't even attempt passes. Really, the only way you get Jalen Hurts passing TDs is on big plays, which with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, you know, out there, of course that's that's that could happen. But, I mean, I have to imagine if the under one and a half line's at minus 150, the under zero and a half line is probably high plus 100s, like plus 180. But I'm not positive. You're going to have to shop that around and see if you can find it anywhere. But uh, I, I just keep an eye on it because I, I think it could be a value. I think it might be offered somewhere at some point. Yeah, All using right. our uh, handy-dandy uh, player prop search tool on the site, um, I was able to find points bet has Delonta Smith over five and a half receptions at plus one thirty value. Um, there we go. And I certainly <laughs> don't that hate one. that. Yeah, I certainly don't hate that. So I will add Devontae Smith. That's gonna be a plus one thirty. All right, is that gonna wrap it up for you, Jacob? Yeah, that'll do it. So we got Randall Cobb over thirty and a half receiving yards at minus one twenty on DraftKings for Jacob. I got Aaron Jones longest rush. Over 14 and a half minus 115. Also, I have a half unit on this parlay of over 79 and a half rushing yards for Aaron Jones and over 29 and a half receiving yards for Randall Cobb at plus 525. Aaron Jones, anytime TD score at plus 130 on Caesars. That'll be a half unit for me, unit for Jacob. I got Christian Watson at plus 300 on Fandle to score a touchdown. That's going to be a half unit. And then Devontae Smith, over five and a half receptions on points bet at plus 130. I'll make that a full unit play for myself. Um... Jacob's going to comment down below when he feels more comfortable. I think that's going to wrap it up. No report card because there was literally zero official plays from the Chargers Chiefs game because we just did not have the information, so we apologize for that. But thank you guys for watching. If you have not, check out the Bang Picks version of this video where we go over the spread, the money line, and the over-under. If you like this video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the subscribe button to see more content like this, and we will see you for the next, next one very soon.